Hello everyone and thanks for joining me in my magic storytelling shed for the third tale in the series of the Lockdown Library Tales. Now this third story is um, about a mouse, a bird and a sausage. And this particular telling of this tale is uh, we, we have to thank none other than Philip Pullman for. The original tale comes from Germany and it was one of the stories that was gathered together by the Brothers Grimm. The Brothers Grimm, these famous story collectors, they went around Germany and beyond searching for stories and pulling them all together into big books of stories. Um, so this is one of their stories. Here we go. Oh, and I should warn you, it's a bit of a silly story. I mean, it's about a sausage after all, but it's also a little bit sad. It's just so you're prepared. The mouse, the bird and the sausage. A mouse, a bird and a sausage decided to set up home together. For a long time, they carried on happily, living within their means and even managing to save just a little. The bird's job was to go into the forest every day and bring back wood for the fire. The mouse had to get water from the well and lay the table for their, for their meal times. And the sausage did the cooking. What else did you expect the sausage to do? But we're never content with living well if we think that we can live better. One day, as the bird was in the forest, he met another bird and boasted to him about his pleasant way of life. The other bird only called him a poor dupe. What do you mean? said the first bird. Well, who's doing the lion's share of the work? You are. You have to fly back and forth carrying really heavy bits of wood while the other two just take it easy at home. They're taking advantage of you and make no mistake about it. The bird thought about it for a while. Hmm, it was true that after the mouse had lit the fire and carried the water in, she usually just went to her little room and had a snooze before it was time to lay the table. The sausage, well, he stayed by the cooking pot most of the time, keeping an eye on the vegetables and from time to time he'd slither through the water to give it a bit of flavouring. If it needed extra seasoning, well, he'd swim a bit more slowly through the water, and that was more or less all he did. When the bird came home from the wood, they'd stack all of the wood neatly by the fire, sit down to eat, and then they'd all sleep soundly until the next day. That was how they lived, and a fine way of life it was too. However, the bird couldn't stop thinking about what the other bird had told him. And the next day, he refused to go and fetch wood. I've been your slave long enough, he declared. You must have taken me for a fool. It's high time we tried a better arrangement. But this works so well, said the mouse. You would say that, wouldn't you, mousy? Besides, said the sausage, this really suits our different talents. Only because we've never tried it any other way, said the bird. The mouse and the sausage argued with the bird, but he just wouldn't be denied. Finally, they gave in and they drew lots. The job of gathering wood fell to the sausage, of cooking to the mouse, and of fetching water and making the fire to the bird. Can you imagine what happened next? Well, after the sausage went out to gather some wood, the bird lit the fire and the mouse put the saucepan on the stove. Then they waited for the sausage to come back with the first load of wood. But he was gone so long that they began to worry about him. So the bird went out to see if he was all right. Not far from the house, he came across a dog licking its lips. Mm. And said the bird, you haven't seen a sausage, have you? 
Yep, uh, I just ate him. Delicious, said the dog. What do you mean? You can't do that. That's appalling. I'll have you up before the law. He was fair game, said the dog. There's no sausage season that I know of. He certainly was not fair game. He was innocently going about his business. This is outright murder. Well, that's just where you're wrong, chum, said the dog. He was carrying forged papers, and that's a capital crime. Forged papers? I've never heard such nonsense, said the bird. Where are they? Where's your proof? I ate them too, said the dog. There was nothing the bird could do. In a fight between a dog and a bird, there's only one winner, and it isn't the bird. He turned back home sadly and told the mouse what had happened. Eaten, she said. Oh, poor sausage. That's just terrible. I shall miss him so badly. Oh, it's very sad, said the bird. We'll just have to do the best we can without him. The bird laid the table slowly and sadly while the mouse put the finishing touches to the stew. She remembered fondly how easily the sausage had managed to swim round and round to season the stew and she thought, well, she could do the same. So she clambered onto the saucepan handle and launched herself into the stew. But either it was too hot and she suffocated or she couldn't swim at all and she drowned. But at all events, the mouse never came out of the pot. When the bird saw the vegetable stew coming to the boil with a dead mouse in it, he panicked. He was making up the fire at the time, and in his shock and alarm, he scattered the burning logs all over the floor and set fire to the house. He raced to the well to get some water to put the fire out, but he got his foot caught in the rope and when the bucket plunged down the well, the bird fell with it. So he was drowned. And, well, that was the end of the sausage, the bird and the mouse. The end. <laughs>